are back for episode eight of everyone's favorite series, reacting to crash videos. As always with this series, our goal is not to make fun of people, put people down, laugh at them, make them cry. We're just looking at these videos to learn something. Someone else made a mistake, they decided to share it, and we're trying to learn so we don't recreate that same mistake. And I think this episode is more jam-packed than usual with lessons to be learned. Stick around to the very end and you'll see what I mean. If you guys like this series or this channel in general and you wanna support it, if you feel like you've learned something good, the best way to support it is checking out our merch down in the description, tuckergot.com. Pick yourself up one of these nice maroon Risky Biscuits Co. t-shirts or a nice leather patch hat. Also, if you guys are looking to learn how to fly, the best place I recommend is Aviator PPG. They're linked in the description as well. They will most likely keep you out of a future reacting to crash videos video if you get training through them. That's the goal at least. Let's get into it with video number one. So this comes from Adventure Brad. He's got a bunch of cool paramotor videos on his channel. I believe the location here is the Salton Sea. There's a couple paramotors in the air. Brad had just landed and it looks like the wind picked up out of nowhere. And this guy comes in for a landing and you can see he's obviously struggling. I'm buddy. I'm here, bud. All right, I got wing. I got wing. And luckily, Brad's a freaking hero. He realizes right away and he runs over to assist. Quickly enough, Brad gets control of this guy's wing, helps him out big time, and he runs away to go help the next guy come in for landing. Get your arm out here. Let me see this arm. Grab your wing, dude. I'm gonna have to go help Jason, okay? Holy shit. Thank you, Brad. Yeah, just grab your wing, dude. So there's a couple things to be learned um, from this video. First off, it shows the importance of kiting skills, ground handling, and especially being able to disable your wing in strong conditions. One great way to disable your wing is by doing a B stall, finding your B lines and just yanking them, and it turns your wing into a streamer so you don't get pulled like this. Another method is just wrapping up your brake lines and pulling them excessively. Another method that works in some situations is just cutting your wing off to the side. That kind of just takes the power away from the wing and gives you an opportunity to disable it. Another thing to learn from this is if you're in Brad's situation where you need to help someone else, first off, you can grab lines if you have gloves on like Brad did. I wouldn't recommend grabbing lines with your bare hands because you can easily get cut. There's two other methods though to help another pilot disable their wing. And I used to do this back when I worked at the skydiving drop zone. If the winds got strong, we would help out the tandem instructors. You go out and you grab the brake toggle out of their hand or if it's not in their hand, just grab a brake toggle and run with it. Pull it a lot, like several feet and that will just turn it into a streamer. It's best if you can grab both brake toggles, sometimes that's not possible. But the other method of disabling someone else's wing is just grabbing fabric, and that's what Brad looked like he was trying to do. Most of the time, if you just grab fabric and run it upwind, that'll take all the power out of the wing. All right, let's move on to video number two, and I don't know if it makes me a bad person for laughing at this hysterically the first time I saw it, but let's take a look, maybe you'll uh, see what I mean. So this is a foot launch tandem taking off at the beach, doing a nice job, he turns around and they're kinda going for it, but the wing's surging. Out of nowhere, Fido and his buddy Sparky come out of nowhere, freaking latch onto this guy's ankle, takes him for a quick ride, and Fido lets go and flops down onto the sand. I always cringe when I see videos of dogs and paramotors, uh, especially when they're not leashed or not trained well. And it's just kind of asking for a disaster. If they hit the prop or the paramotor kicks them or maybe distracts the paramotor and then he crashes, it's not a good mix. I would have never expected freaking Fido here to grab this guy's ankle and go for a quick ride. What makes it okay to laugh though is that Fido bounced off the sand and he ran away. <laughs> He was okay. All right, let's look at video number three, and this comes from 577 Jersey Customs. 
I actually know Tommy, I've flown with him a few times, and this is a pretty good video. So Tommy's out flying around, having a beautiful flight on a summer day, and he's just flying through this field, having a good old time, and sure enough, slowly he just starts drifting towards the tree line. Oh, woohoo! All right, hit the trees, baby. <laughs> Are we good? <laughs> yeah. Now, remarkably, Tommy was completely fine. He got lifted up in the air and slammed kind of face first onto the ground, but I guess it was gentle enough. He didn't get hurt, his gear didn't get damaged, and he pulls his wing out of the tree, checks over his motor, and takes off again. Oh yeah, that was freaking stupid, huh? Flying too close to the trees, caught one of these branches. Everything looks good though. So Tommy sets up, takes off, flies away, continues his evening as if nothing ever happened. I appreciate him sharing this video because this is something we've looked at a few times in the past and something that I personally did back on the Icarus race. The lesson to be learned is just awareness of your wingtips. And it seems like such a stupid thing, like obviously you could see it coming in the footage, but in the moment, sometimes you get a little distracted and sometimes you think you've got enough room, but you really don't and all it takes is that wingtip to catch. All right, we're starting to ramp up into more gnarly territory with video number four. This comes from Chris Jewel 7333 So Chris is setting up to fly in this really beautiful location. He's on kind of a stony riverbed area next to a river, and then next to that river is a pretty decent sized hill. Now, if we stop this frame at the very beginning of the video, he says, windy app looked okay. Now, just judging by this still frame here, a few bells would be going off in my mind. Looking at the direction of the wind, it's coming from the hill, and it's a significant amount of wind. I would say that's gotta be five to six miles per hour of wind. Now, five to six miles an hour of wind in a flat area like Florida is nothing. That's perfect flying conditions. But you come out here into an area where there's lots of vertical terrain, that five to six miles per hour is borderline could be bad. So Chris sets up to fly. He's thinking that the winds look pretty good. He pulls his trims all the way in. He's on a Roadster 3 made by Ozone. He takes off and he says that immediately he can tell that the conditions are pretty rowdy. So right about here, I noticed I started getting thrown around quite a bit. I just figured it was a rotor coming off those trees. So I figured if I got up a little higher, I'm sure it would mellow out, but it did not. Now take a look right here. This I think is a mistake. You see him releasing his trimmers. He was trimmed all the way in and he dumps his trimmers to full speed. Now he turns 180 degrees, he's flying back towards his landing area and this is when it gets real bad. And I started making that turn and uh, it felt like I was in a whirlwind or something. I just, I couldn't even, couldn't even understand what was going on. He gets slapped by a decent bit of rotor and takes probably a 50 to 60% asymmetric collapse on his left side. The wing turns probably about 120 degrees, looks like a little more than a 90 degree turn. His legs go flying up in the air and that's a scary sight and then he's looking down at the river. Thankfully, wing reinflates very rapidly and he's back on course with a turn to the right. Now at this point, I think he decides that it's time to call it quits. Conditions are not good at all. And he comes in for a landing just straight down the riverbed. It's not the most graceful landing, but in a situation like this, I would take it. So I just landed after that, I don't even know what to call that. That was the scariest thing I've ever experienced. I mean, the wind wasn't that bad. I knew Wendy had called for up to 10, 11 mile an hour gusts, but average was six and seven. But these mountains up here must just be throwing some crazy wind down here. 
Now, if you take a look while he's doing this debrief, he shows his windsock once again, and still it looks like the winds are coming from that hill. What happens is as the air comes over that hill, it breaks apart and starts to turn into rotor and rotor and paramotors do not mix. Rotor is essentially really turbulent air. It's air that's swirling and tumbling and it's not smooth to fly in and it can cause collapses exactly like you saw in this video. The other thing to note is not only the direction, but if you take a look at the bushes in the background, you can see that those bushes on the river are kind of bending over. First off, at the end here, he says Windy was calling for six to seven mile per hour winds up to 10 and 11 mile per hour gusts. And he says that he doesn't think that's a lot of wind. And that's true, that's not a lot of wind, but it's also dependent upon the site you're flying. Like I mentioned, if you had that forecast in Florida, it would probably be totally fine. With 10 to 11 mile per hour gusts at this specific site, I would probably stay on the ground myself. The second problem arises when he lets his trimmers out. Like I mentioned, not only does this distract him and take his focus away from actively piloting, which is essential and should be kind of number one priority when you're getting in bad rotor like this, but also the combination of trimming out and actively piloting is generally considered not a good combination for turbulent situations like this. In general, when you look at reflex paramotor wings, a lot of them state that when you get in turbulent conditions, if you let the trimmers out, that will increase the collapse resistance of the wing. And that's true up until a certain point. What happens is you increase the collapse resistance, so it takes more to collapse your wing, but if it does collapse at that point, it's gonna be bad and the wing's not gonna recover as well because of the situation it's trimmed in. Now that only really applies for trimmed out and not touching your brakes. It's generally accepted that trimming out and actively piloting through turbulence is not a good combination because essentially what you're doing is if this is your wing, this is the front and this is the back, by trimming out, you're decreasing the angle of attack and then by pulling brake, you're increasing the angle of attack. So you're essentially letting up on the trailing edge lines and then also pulling down your brakes. It's kind of a counteractive thing you're doing. In my personal experience, if I'm trying to get somewhere and I trim out, I have a certain level of bumps that I'll find acceptable to just be trimmed out hands off. Now, I will never do the combination of trimmed out and actively piloting. Once those bumps get too bad and I feel like I should probably start actively piloting, I pull my trimmers in and then I start actively piloting the wing. In the trimmed in or trimmed neutral configuration, one, you're not counteracting any forces, and two, if you do experience a collapse, you're in a better trim setting for the wing to recover. So there's a lot to be learned from this video from Chris and I really appreciate him sharing it and giving a debrief. I think this is really valuable information. All right, our final and fifth video comes from Ian Kirk and I think this could have been a fatal accident had Ian not been such a hardcore badass and been as prepared as he was. So Ian's video will be linked down below along with all the other videos and I really encourage you guys to watch his full video because he does a full on debrief of exactly what happened. So Ian is out here ski launching his paramotor. It's really, really cold, there's snow, there's mountains, and there's a lake. And Ian gets the idea that he wants to try a foot drag on his skis on the lake. I've thought of doing this personally myself. It sounds like a cool idea, but as Ian finds out, it's kind of a sketchy, not so great idea. Fun to water ski. So I just said it's gonna be fun to water ski. I'm looking at my skis. I foot dragged this whole lake and I'm thinking, ah, oh, it can't be much different than foot dragging, can it? And you'll actually hear me adjusting the throttle because I actually had my skis on the water and then I just let off a little bit and tried to stand on them. And then this happened. Luckily, Ian had flotation on his paramotor, which fortunately also inflated right away. Now imagine this, freezing cold water, skis on your feet, ski boots, lots of clothing, 
gloves. This is potentially the worst situation to drown in a paramotor. It's been said for years that drowning is the number one killer for paramotor pilots. I don't know if that's necessarily true anymore, but drowning is definitely a hazardous situation if you're a paramotor pilot. I think if it weren't for his power floats in this situation, things could have gone a lot differently. Some of the key points Ian talks about here is if you have gloves on and you're in the water, take those gloves off immediately. That's number one priority because he was struggling. He couldn't get his buckles undone with his bulky gloves. Obviously he ended up having some trouble swimming with his skis on. I think he kicked them off, but he still couldn't really um, paddle that well. One really interesting point though is Ian says he was not that panicked and he wasn't really worried about the cold water. He's like, yeah, I do ice baths, like it was no big deal. And I'm like, dude, if I was in this situation, I would have been panicking. I would have been inhaling water, probably because I would have been gasping due to this cold water. I think your average Joe wouldn't have fared as well as Ian did. I think he was really well prepared and he didn't panic. He just took care of the problem. He got out of his harness, he swam back to the edge of this lake, and he comes out of the water like cracking jokes. Snow skis don't work so good on the water. They don't, do they? They, they drag a lot. They drag a lot. You just gotta skim. Guess you're never uh, briefed on that one, huh? No, I wasn't briefed on that one. <laughs> Eventually, he gets a kayak and pulls his paramotor out of the lake, starts it up, and I'm pretty sure it ran and was totally fine after that. But this is overall like a good example of how the worst possible situation kind of went perfectly as good as it could have gone. He was prepared, he didn't panic, he got unclipped and he swam to shore. I really appreciate Ann sharing this footage. There's a lot more good lessons if you go take a look at the full clip with this full debrief. But overall lesson, water can be extremely dangerous for paramotors and if you're gonna fly anywhere near it, be prepared. That's all I've got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed those five clips and stay tuned for another React and Crash Videos video, part nine sometime in the future. Once again, if you wanna support this channel, drop a like down below, that part's free. If you wanna support it some more, check out the merch in the description, rep some Paramotor Risky Biscuits Co merch. Stay safe out there, try not to make more crash videos and if you do have some crash videos you want me to react to, drop them in the comments and uh, I'll do my best to include them in part nine. With that, I will see you guys. Till the next one, peace.